Aaron Rayer. Obviously, the last time we saw you, uh, you was after your post-fight uh, victory. So now that that's in the past, how's life changed after you know getting the stoppage win over someone like Jessica Andrade? Uh, you know, I mean, that was <laughs> super fun. Uh, you know, I just went home, relaxed a little bit. Um, yeah, and I got the call that they want me to come back to Vegas for fight week and stuff and do a couple things with DraftKings and come watch this big fight uh, for the title. And um, yeah, I'm just super excited to see what happens tonight. Do you think you would have come to this fight anyway, given the fight that's happening in the co-main event and where you stand in the rankings now? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I think I'm definitely next in line for that title shot. Uh, so I want to see what happens tonight. And you sound confident that you're next in line, but I'm sure you've heard Valentina say, you know, maybe maybe one, maybe even two more wins away. She doesn't seem really sold on you as the next contender. So what do you make of her comments and that? What do you say to that? Uh, you know, honestly, I don't really care. I mean, if you look at the division, I don't think anything else really makes sense, sense besides me fighting next. Have you heard fans just kind of dismissing Alexa tonight, being like, well, I can't wait for Aaron to fight Valentina next. They're not, they're not even really counting this fight. Yeah, I definitely have heard people say that. Um, you know, I, I even myself, I think Valentina is going to win this fight tonight. Um, you know, I, I think Alexa is a great fighter in her own right, but um, I just don't see where she wins this fight uh, really anywhere. But um, anything can happen as a fight, so we'll see what happens. When you say anything can happen, if Alexa does win, you'd have to assume they do the rematch right away, given what Valentina's done in this division. I assume you would want to just get another fight in there rather than just wait out maybe even a whole year if Alexa does win? Oh, yeah. If Alexa wins, I definitely think they do a rematch. Um, and I think that would I would want to fight in between. I wouldn't want to wait that long um, just to get more experience under my belt and just not be it'd be in competition still. So when I do fight for the title, I'm still used to it. And I'm heard. I'm sure you've heard the UFC might do a pay-per-view in Jersey. Is are you if, if say Valentina does win quickly, you're hoping maybe you can book, you know, a title co-main event fight in Newark in, in the Prudential Center? Yeah, you know, winning a title at home would be would be great. Um, we we'll have to see what happens tonight. Uh, you know, that's that's pretty soon. Um, so yeah, we'll see what happens tonight first, and then we'll see. Aaron, over here. Um, so uh, you know, obviously, we sort of talked there about Valentina kind of dismissing you. Did th did that surprise you a bit that she didn't give you more credit for that win against uh, Jessica Andrade? Uh, no, I think <laughs> Valentina seems pretty dismissive of most of her opponents. It just seems like something that maybe she likes to personally do for herself to make herself feel more confident. Uh, so, yeah, I definitely wasn't surprised. Valentina told me that uh, if all goes well tonight, she's healthy. International Fight Week is kind of what she's looking at next. Uh, I know Jose just mentioned New Jersey, but is that something that you would be interested in? It's usually a really big event every year. That would be perfect. I want International Fight Week, too. Um, I think that gives me a, a perfect amount of time. Um, and if she wants that as well, I think they, they should do that. And, and just back to the Valentina comments, do you feel like in some ways she's underestimating you, uh, you know, just with how she talked about your performance against Andrade? Um, no, necessarily. I mean, I know Valentina's a champ for a reason. I'm sure she, you know, she says those things in the media, but I know she's always training just like myself. Um, of course, everybody thinks that they're better than their opponents. Um, I know I'm better than her and, um, you know, I can't wait to beat her. And, and Dana White, I know earlier this week mentioned about you being next. I don't know if you caught that clip because he mentioned how Talia Santos or some issues about her fighting in the United States. Yeah, I did hear that. And, um, you know, I think it makes sense to him and I think it makes sense to everybody else. Last one for me, uh, aside from doing, you know, your obligations at uh, being here, what else have you been up to here in Vegas? Oh, uh, you know, just hanging out, going to dinners, um, just enjoying. Uh, I, you know, I love I'm still training at the PI and stuff, too, which has been nice. Thanks for the time. Hi, Erin. Um, after your fight, Jessica came out and said that she had some issues with her sports bra, and she wasn't really using it as, as an excuse, but she did say that that played into it. I'm wondering if you have ever had any experiences like that or if you noticed that at the time or if you could comment on that at all. Um, you know, I never, I didn't notice in the fight that that happened. Um, I watched it back and I saw a little bit. I, I think maybe it, it could have done a little bit interfering in the fight, but it didn't interfere with her getting choked at all. Um, so I'm not going to give her that. Um, you know, I've, I haven't really had too many problems myself. They're pretty good about like hemming anything that you need. So everything can fit properly. You just need to be vocal about what you need to make sure that everything fits you right. Do you feel like if they offered a sports bra with a higher neck that you or maybe some women that you train with would want to use that? Um, yeah, I'm not really sure. I feel like for me, it's pretty comfortable. I know I usually get the straps adjusted like an inch tighter just so I don't have any like, uh, like gapping on the side. Um, but I mean, if some girls want that, maybe they'll offer it. I'm not sure. Thank you. No problem. Hey, Aaron, back here. Uh, Aaron, uh, you know, People talk a lot about your age. I'm just wondering, you know, when you go out there, big T-Mobile arena, and I'm sure now you really recognize fans really want to stop you and 
just give you a lot of that attention. I mean, what's that like to go, I'm assuming very quickly in your career, obviously it's been grown gradually, but I'm assuming it's now been a big pop and just what it's like to enjoy that. Yeah, you know, all my uh, like fan interactions that I've had have all been positive. Um, you know, I've just been enjoying it. I know what winning big fights like that comes with. Um, but yeah, I've been enjoying it. It's all been good. And then uh, I was just wondering, you obviously did the seminar for the middle school girls. Uh, just wondering how that went and how you felt you were able to maybe just provide something for them. Oh, yeah, that went really well. Um, yeah, it was a, a bunch of, there was a lot of girls there, a bunch of middle school girls, like 12, 13 year old girls. Um, and it was like me and Vanessa Demopoulos showed them a couple of things. They seemed like they had a lot of fun. And, um, you know, we were trying to show them, made them drill a couple of things so, so they can bring home and, um, you know, use it if they ever needed to. And then just curious, have you been able to celebrate becoming the new Heads Up champion? <laughs> I haven't yet, but I definitely should. Maybe tonight after the fights. Thank you. Yeah.